Are you totally different when it comes to sex and copulation? Have you judged yourself out of receiving pleasure? Have you judged yourself into receiving pleasure in certain ways and excluded other ways? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life or lack of it affected other areas of your life? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of The Pleasure Zone, pleasure diva and body whisperer, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, sweet pleasures. You have entered The Pleasure Zone. I know. I know. Isn't that wild that you have The Pleasure Zone? Well, we're going to be entering a few other areas today that are sometimes all it's yeah, so we're going to be going there today. I know. It's great. So you have actually, you're joining me uh, on a program tonight that's called Backdoor Man, Tips on Anal Sex. And, you know, it's kind of a uh, fun episode. I don't know if you guys know, but I actually really love talking about bodies in all sorts of bodies. I'm fascinated by them. I'm even fascinated by things like today I watched a video on tumor removal from faces. Yep. Because I'm fascinated by this stuff. Bodies fascinate me. You know, you know, people could show me the what would be termed the growth thing in the planet, and I'm like, wow, that's interesting. I got to see that. So that's part of my fascination, and that's what I'm here to talk about. I'm actually here to talk about pleasure with bodies. It's truly, we have these amazing things that we've come into this life. We chose embodiment, which means that us, the beings, now have these cool sacks of flesh that we walk around with that have sensations. Sensations, it's amazing. Sexual pleasure. They have smells and tastes. They can taste, they smell things. We have senses. It's awesome. We have brains that function. And it's crazy and cool. And we're going to be talking about a very little hidden space on the body that not a lot of people talk about. We're going to be talking about Uranus. I actually did hear that Uranus is going direct, so it's kind of good timing uh, in terms of planetary shifts. You know, I could be off, but if Uranus is going direct, fantastic. What timing do I have? When we're talking about anuses, I know there's going to be a lot of points of view coming up. There's going to be people going, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, anal sex is my favorite, that's the best. Oh, oh yeah, dirty girls do that. Dirty guys do that. You're gay if you do that. You're da, da, da. And there's going to be a million of them. There's going to be Christian points of view flying out of here. There's going to be different religious points of view slapping in here. Because guess what? For thousands of years, this topic has been taboo, wrong, evil, and bad. And we're through that. It was actually really until even the last decade that the sodomy uh, act uh, laws were enforced in the U.S. It was like 2003 or something where they started to uh, reverse those laws. So we're talking in the last 15, 16 years in North America, there has been with with the acts of sodomy, which acts of sodomy include many, like um, the acts of sodomy was kind of a, a general way of um, getting you in trouble for not having a very vanilla sex, I guess you could say. So you could even, the, under the sodomy acts, believe it or not, included things like bestiality, um, even oral sex. Who, I don't even understand how oral sex got thrown into the sodomy. Uh, but sodomy itself comes, uh, is, is basically the word sodom. As in, in the book, there was Sodom and Gomorrah. And that is where the whole basis of, um, you know, penetrating anuses became very wrong. It's all from that. If you want to read it and go into that more, go ahead. Um, if I had a Christian-based sex show, it would be fascinating. Maybe I'll do a Christian-based sex show. I do have quite a few who are very versed in the Bible and um, are sort of like on the edge of preachers almost, because I have friends who do it. Um, that could be a fascinating episode, actually. So maybe we will talk about sex from the biblical perspective, right? um, which is actually from a lot of religious perspectives, because a lot of the religious teachings across the board quite similar. So 
Um, there are also beliefs in religious beliefs that spilling the seed without having it to be procreation is a waste. So like masturbation was a waste uh, for men because women don't spill seed. Um, so, uh, you know, anal sex would be considered a waste, right? Oral sex was a waste. All of those were nothing children and they were all, all of those acts were considered sinful based on very old law, all about procreating and procreating and procreating. Well, that's cool. I'm glad that we are, um, I'm glad that it's 2019, first show of the year, and uh, that maybe we are a little bit more enlightened, although I know there are still places in the world where we are and where people will still uh, kill other people for acts of sodomy. And this is in the world where people will go to jail and still be castrated for acts of sodomy. I mean, even in England, um, until recently, the law uh, about uh, homosexuality was very real. And, you know, some of the most brilliant minds in British history were castrated for being homosexuals. So what is that? Acts of sodomy. Those all fall under those, those laws of the acts of sodomy. Crazy stuff. So if there's stuff coming up for you and it's really agitating and you're like, I don't know if I want to talk about this and it's so weird, I congratulate you for sticking around even for these last six, seven minutes just to be part of possible evolution of this conversation to have you look at what could be pleasurable in an area that is so defined as wrong for so long and that people have been put in jail for it and people have been killed for it. Um, there were laws in Amsterdam that if you were as a sodomist, you would be drowned alive. So that rope around your neck and throw a giant weight in the water and tossed into the water to drown in the uh, in the sea. This in Amsterdam, one of the most now this is in the 1700s, mind you, the, this now one of the most evolved sexual cities in the world, where we have prostitution available that's legal. We have, you know, all of these other things that are, are like 40 years in advance and so many other things, yet we're so behind the times um, with, you know, punishment for for homosexuals so or acts of what would be considered homosexuality, which is ironic because these same acts of um, even if acted upon uh, a man having anal sex with a woman, were still considered illegal in a lot of states in the U.S. Crazy but true, it wasn't just that it was a homosexual thing, but there was a vibe around it because it was a sodomy act. There was everything around that that we, um, judge, uh, the judgment was against homosexuality. So there were no words for homosexuals probably until the last 150, 160 years. I'll have to look that up exactly. I don't remember my information because that was in a class I took uh, 23 years ago in the history of sexuality. But it's very new that we have this terminology like heterosexuality. And even uh, through the ages, we've developed more of these terms like pansexuality, omnisexuality. We have these these more broader senses of uh, and scope of um, eyeing ourselves sexually, and what if we didn't even have to identify ourselves sexually? But that's a note. Um, so it is almost the term is very new, and the term itself um, it was only based basically through um, psychological evaluations, like different psychologists kind of gathered to me. We're trying to understand um, basically. Uh, Different acts actually were uh, considered uh, like mental illnesses, right? So in the DSM-3, uh, the D it's a diagnostic tool for psychologists and psychiatrists. There's these diagnostic tools. And until the 90s, so when I went to university in 1992, 93, um, the DSM-4 had just come out in the few years prior. And in the DSM-3, the um we were told anyway that um that homosexuality was a mental illness so this is all really really new that okay to have anal sex and not be judged for it and not even be put in jail for it even if it's with um if you're having uh, anal sex with a woman as a man you could have been put in jail for that act as well so crazy times 
so I get that there's a lot of stuff behind it for thousands of years. There's been a lot of stuff. Unless you look at certain cultures like the Greeks who um, kind of uh, celebrate, actually, they kind of got away with it in so many ways until Christianity jumped in and told them how wrong and awful and bad they were. And I think a lot of cultures really, like we can take the Greeks for that example because they're, it's kind of uh, widely spread known that um you know, in ancient there was more, or maybe it's just widely spread in my imagination because I've read so much about it, but did have um, a very, like, uh, openness about um, sex, men with men, women with women, men with women, orgies, like, all of that was very normal. So that, you know, that kind of lifestyle, and then to have rules placed on you to tell you how wrong, bad, and awful you are, you take all the pleasure you've ever had in your life, and you've turned that against yourself to say, to agree with these points of view that people are telling you how bad, wrong, and awful you are for desiring, say, anal sex or for gifting it or enjoying it, have pleasure with it. And so now you're going to have to make sure you're really bad, wrong, and awful for a really long, maybe lifetimes, maybe millennia. So wouldn't it be way fun, way fun if we didn't have any point of view and we followed our bodies and we followed what our bodies would like. Now, I do. I dare you because we're actually going to be heading to a break in a few minutes, but I dare you to contemplate this question. I didn't have a point of view about me sexually. If I didn't if I didn't identify sexually, what would I choose? If I didn't have to identify myself as a heterosexual woman, homosexual woman, bisexual woman, if I didn't have to identify myself what would I choose? You know, we think we have to identify ourselves. You know, you get on dating apps and you identify what's for your preference, right? You have to figure you out and, and put box so that people can choose the package that you've presented to them. Uh, so what if you didn't have a box to present and you're just like, ah, oh, here I am. I am me, infinite me, check me out. And And maybe I like this today and maybe I don't like this tomorrow. Are you willing to explore and find by... I'm a person who never will have anal sex. I'm a person who really loves sex. What if it's none of that? What if it's in the moment? And what if you can ask some questions about body too? What would your body like? Like really getting down to does your body, what would you like in that moment? Because your body might really like to have anal sex one day and not the other day. Because maybe chilly the other day and your body's like, oh no, I've got explosive farts and that's just not for me. I don't want to fart all over the place. And um, Although, you know, farting all over the place when you have uh, vaginal penetration can not be fun sometimes too. Unless your partner has a fetish for farts and there is a fetish for farts. So I'm not saying that it's not possible. You happen to be with somebody who likes farts, go for it. There are it isn't a huge percentage of the population who's really turned on by that. So just something to be aware of. But I'm going to give you some super pragmatic tips because I I love pragmatic tips. Um, I love tips and I love to give tips and get tips. And so I'm going to gift you guys about, I think I wrote about 10 uh, tips down to, to give you so that you can get into the groove. And get it all fun and yummy if it's something you're choosing, right? So first I want you to just look, do I have any points of view about this? And if you do, just go, holy crap, whose are they? Let's abrate them. If they're, you know, from, if they're cultural, if they're whatever they are, cool, do you know? Maybe not. And can you change them? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I think that's on Bob. Can you build it? Yes, you can. So let's take a tip from Builder and yes, you can. And we're going to actually head off to a commercial break. Just remember, you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, in case you're listening on one of the many other platforms that we're on. And uh, you can find lots of great shows on this station. So stay tuned. We are heading off to our commercial break. We'll be right back. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself 
yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MilicaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome back. We're talking about anal sex today, because why not? And the title of today's show is Backdoor Man, Anal Tips. Tips on sex, that's what we're talking about. And it's a fun topic for me, because I think it's a topic that a lot of people avoid, because the anus is so naughty and bad and dirty. It's just so dirty, so wrong. It's really funny. It actually helps us clean our... Um, out our bodies, right? It It's such a functional thing. It's such a cool part of the body that whatever comes into our mouth goes out our anus. Fascinating. It's just like, well, not everything. I mean, it, we do keep nutrients in our body, but it's such a great system we have from tip to toe. And I think it's so cool. And it's such a f- funny thing. It's such a hidden area and such an area that we often avoid. Um, you know, and even with with children, you know, it'll make it like, oh, you're stinky butt. Like people will use anus as, a, as like a way of insulting people. You a hole. Like it's used derogatory thing. It's it's your anus. It's helping you let go in the world. And if you can't like, darn it, you're going to be holding on to a lot of crap, right? So your anus friend, and if you just let it help you out and assist you, you might let go. You might let go in ways you never imagined. It might be so orgasmic. You might feel like a weight lid. You might actually clear your body out. Like There's so many things that energetically and physically occur with your anus. And right beside your anus is your perineum, which is actually like your root chakra. This area, this whole area, has so much to do with um, like, like our... Uh, basically like our foundation of of existence, like how we thrive and survive. Survival instincts are all in there. And one of our survival instincts around the anus, um, it's an instinct, reflex, whatever. One of the things about the anus, let's get this really clear before we start, is the anus is designed mechanically as a mud to push things out. That's what it does. It pushes things out pushes your poop out. It doesn't suck your poop in, pushes it out. It doesn't suck farts in, it pushes it out. But you can kind of like master the controlling of farts coming in and out, or you can just let her go. It does push things out. It's a muscle that's going to do that. So if you're going to put something in there, whether it's a finger or, or a cucumber or a um, small rodent, because people do um, I don't recommend it, but I'm just saying that happens. Do you remember the Richard Gere stories? I don't know if that was true or not, but, you know, it's designed to push things out. Keep that in mind because a lot of things I'll be discussing, will um, we will touch on this and how to get around the fact that your anus naturally pushes out when you're trying to put something in and you're trying to get some pleasure going on there. How do you get it to just let it be? Let it be. Whisper words of wisdom to your ears and see what shows up. 
So I have, you know, me and my pragmatic tools. And one of my most favorite pragmatic tools for all for all acts of sex is conversation. One of my most pragmatic tools ever. Guess what? Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it to your lover. Hey, lover, guess what I'm thinking about? I was thinking about how fun it would be to have anal play. Oh, yeah. And you start showing them what you might like. You could do a little demo on yourself. Now, that's just fab- Discussions are fabulous. Discussing it can actually have you... If So the thing what I know is if you're not willing to talk about it, guess what? You're not really willing to be present with it or, or choose it. Okay, mind you, if you are deaf, you can still talk about it in sign language. Um, if your partner is deaf and they can't hear you, you can draw diagrams. Either way, what I'm saying is there's a conversation. Communication is what's key. So communicate about this, what your fears are, what you know turns you on about that or turns you off about that. Um, I had this conversation with my husband literally on the first date. And my husband is a no backdoor man guy. He's not interested in it, not his thing. And he's also not interested in receiving. So not interested in gifting it, not interested in receiving it. But uh, over the years, he's actually become mellowed out to like kind of being willing to gift it. He's kind of like, I don't know. And and it's not something he's done uh, in his life. It's not something he's ever really desired. But it is something that he would be uh, willing to try probably before he dies. Uh, only because I mention it randomly once in a while. I have had in my life experience with it. And, um, I actually enjoy it. So I don't have the same point of view that one has about it. And that doesn't give rise or reason to... Uh, Get divorced because you will be anal sex with me. That's not a good enough reason in my books. But um, but for the who that is a good enough reason, if that's like one of your mainstays of pleasure um, and your partner is not willing to go there with you, that's something you really could have a conversation about fairly early on in the relationship, you know, maybe five or six years before you have that conversation and get really angry with them for not choosing it or you not even choosing to have the conversation or communicate about it. So discuss, you know, fun things like, what do you find dirty and naughty about anal sex? Okay, you got that my life is a little bit different and I have really weird conversations with everyone all the time. If you are willing to have the weird conversations, those conversations that bring up your fears, your point of view, um, and all those things, then you can you, you can have these questions about anything, but we're going there tonight with anal sex because it can be a pretty big for a lot of people and it can be a pretty uh, big fear as well. For anybody who's, even for the gifter, it can be a big fear, especially if you have any kind of um, germaphobic things going If you have something where like, you know, ooh, anuses are so dirty and bad. Um, yes, it's true that anuses have poop coming out of them and poop has different bacteria and sometimes quite often parasites whether they're microscopic or whatever and bacteria in there and there's can be viruses coming out as well so um other things can come out too like medications whatever there's lots of things in your feces uh you know whatever it is what it is so you are willing, though, to go down that road and that conversation has led you to a big yes. Well, there's more There's more information for you. If your conversation leads to a yes, where do you go from there? Well, first things first, uh, after the yes, is hygiene. Hygiene is numero in my books for all sex acts. Whether it's oral sex, anal sex, vaginal sex, wash it up, kids. I'm not talking about sterilizing your body. Um, we talked about um, hygiene and penile hygiene in the summer, so you can listen to those episodes if you want. Um, the vagina cleans itself, kids. So all you got to do is wash it up. You really don't want to. If you are using soaps, use ones that don't have scent because they can change the pH balance of your the JJ, and it can also create um, things like um, bacterial vaginosis, different pH balance in your um, in your vagina, and it can change the labia balances. So your whole vulva, wash your vulva with a um, soap with no scent. Guess what? Do the same for your anus, guys and gals. You do not need to have a scented uh, anus or a scented um, crotch of any sort. You have smells in there, and your 
body actually releases scent from those areas. Oh, I could get into the discussions about what happens when those get infected. Now that gets interesting because you have these, um, it's called your apocrine system. That's A-P-O-C-R-N-E system. And it's like, uh, it's like I think it's like where the hair follicles are. Uh, I'm, anyway, it's like right beside that. And they can get infected and bacteria can come out and they can get fun, oozy and gross. That is another issue. That's when it gets gross and you might need to gross in a way that's like, it's gross for you because you're walking around with infection and, and like stuff. If that's going on, or if you see that on your partner, they need to go and get, seek medical assistance because that's like that needs some um, assistance there for sure to clean that up. Because that's that's a health issue at that point. That's not a I'm not turned on by that issue. That's a health issue. So keep clean. Um, and if, unless you have like some super underlying threats where that or that's not possible, then um, then yeah, if if you're at the kind of normal body that can be cleaned with soap. We're good to go. Get some hygiene going. Some people were to use an enema before having anal sex. Now, that's, that is not a must-do, but it is a possibility. If you're somebody who has frequent... Um, it, it, so, for example, if you have bowel frequency, if you frequently, if you poo like daily at least two, three times a day, the chances are you're not bunged up and you're not holding on to poo. I talk to a lot of people about poo all the time, all the time, because that's one of the questions on my questionnaire. If you come into my office, it's you what your poo is like, how often you poo, the consistency of your poo. Uh, it's not because I have a poo, because it tells me a lot about your health. It tells me a lot about how much water you're drinking and all that sort of stuff. So it is uh, something that if you are pooing often and frequently, your bowels should be clear clean and pretty clear. Now, if you're not, then that's something that you can do a flush, an enema flush. And if you are somebody who eats a lot of fibrous foods, your bowels will uh, be moving that out more freely. So that can that can be something for you to be aware of, right, is the difference between um, finger going in and ha or the penis going in or the toy, that sensation, or I have to go poo sensation. Because um, feel very, very similar, but it's good to be clear on what's what. And try and go poo before, before you actually have anal sex. Try your best to go poo and, you know, wash the area, clean it good. And if you can, um, you know, if that, that's great. If you can't and the enema is required, go for it. You can get those at your local pharmacy. Just follow the instructions on them. It's really easy to do. They're not expensive. And it can also clear your fears of, having it turn into a shit storm because you know maybe the last thing you want in the middle of having uh, some fun is that your your body like i was saying is designed to push out so sometimes when that thrust in becomes extreme or fast or too hard uh, your body will like retaliate it's like warfare and it's going to be like no no get out of here and just push and the poop will go with the cleaner up beforehand get it all ready to rock and roll very, very important. Okay, wow, I, apparently I can talk about anal sex forever because it's already halfway through the show and I got like eight more tips for you guys. Okay, I'm going to get through them all. I swear I will. So, so you, you are listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network and we are going to head off to commercial break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world and to like yourself a lot more? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. 
Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question. Always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beingyouclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. Beingyouclass.com What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? Beingyouclass.com This is The Pleasure Zone with Body Whisperer Melissa Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MelissaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, and welcome back to the Pleasure Zone. We're talking about anal sex tonight. It's called Backdoor Man Tips on Anal Sex. So um, one of the things I mentioned before break was hygiene. So it's hygiene of your body, but also hygiene of uh, anything penetrating. So make sure that those fingers are clean, nails are trimmed if you're sticking a finger in an anus or sticking many in. Make sure those fingernails are trimmed right down, like literally non-existent. You do not want to scratch the in somebody's um, rectum. Ooh, no, you don't. So trim them right down till they're non-existent. Pretty much start with one finger, build it up, two, three. Gold, if you want to go for some fisting, go for it. If your partner is into that, go for it. Fun. Uh, but you got to make sure you're lubricated. Why? Because the anus does not lubricate itself, kids. I know. I know, you didn't know that, and the one lubricant that might come out of an anus is poop. But the anus does not lubricate. I know it's surprising, surprising but true. So, you lubrication in vast quantities. This is not a time to be cheap or shy on lubricant. This is a time where the lubricant shall be spread around the world like a giant fountain of lube squirting out at all angles and dimensions and places. It just needs to be everywhere. Thorough, thorough lubricant that inside on everything. Just if you're walking away like a giant slip and slide, that's where we're at. The more the better. And yes, if if the partner is that's penetrating is like, I don't think my penis feels nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Because you definitely don't want any dryness going on in your anus. Uh, or your rectum because you can get cuts, you can get infections. That's not cool. Um, even if you are monogamous with your partner, you might want to use condom anyway as well, just because uh, there can be transfer. And sometimes there can be like fecal debris going on that can get stuck in a, the head of a penis. It can cause um, infection like UTIs. Uh can be stuck around the head too if it doesn't get clean and you going in later for some other fun and you're like, whoa, there's poop there. And listen to that, like you might want to just be thorough. Condoms are a good choice for sure. And um, yeah, so yeah, that just, I just went tangent there. Sorry, kids. Um, definitely lubricate though. And what do you want to lubricate with? Well, you don't lubricate with food. I'll tell you that much. Um, it's, you know, people talk about using nut oil and that's all good and fun. Um and interesting and yes eat coconut oil and you can rub it on your skin and I got a thing about sticking food inside my body that it's food it'll rot and unless you can super guarantee that is being um, washed out no I would say no so um, by all means get yourself some really good silicone based lubricant the water lubricants will just get sticky and dry out You'll need tons of it. Silicone lubricants are great. Um, actually, if you need to be directed to a silicone, but you can find it on pureromance.ca uh, slash Melitza Jelinek. Guess what? I'm actually connected to a sex toys company. Um, the links are actually in Buyer Choices Network on um, on my page. You can find it in this event. So 
So in the U.S. and in Canada, you can get uh, you can get comb-based lube on those sites through me. That would be cool. There's also things, uh, things that you can use to um, kind of numb the anus up a bit. And uh, the same company, Romance, has something called Booty Ease, which is, um, how can I describe it? It's kind of like Amba for your bum. That's the way I would describe it. It's like, you know Ambisol when you're a kid and your teeth were sore? Parents would rub Ambisol on and it would get numb. It's kind of like that for your bum. So try that out for fun, just for a little something different. It can help you relax too. So, yeah. And I just want you to remember, too, all of this is a choice. Do not let anybody ever pressure you into this. Just don't let them give you too much pressure in this area because it's like, whoa, that can hurt. But peer pressure, by all means, forget about it. If you know that it's not working for you, say no. If you know that it's any of you, clear it and see what you would choose if you didn't have that point of view or you didn't have that thought or all that problem, all those lifetimes of people telling you how bad and wrong it was. So lubrication, lubrication, lubrication is your friend, guys, totally your friend. Uh, yes, no food things. Like some people also like to use avocados for for lubes or avocado oil. They're, great. They're all food-based. You can definitely use them for things like oral sex if you want, um, like on a penis. But I wouldn't stick it inside a vagina or inside of an anus. I just That's just my preference because it's food to me rot. That's just my point of view. Um, so do what works for you. And also, when playing with uh, an anus, like I mentioned before, the anus is designed to push things out. So with that in mind, you want to start small. Start small and go big. So you want to start with just the tip of a finger. And when I say this, you want to do this because the pubic cough muscle, which is that muscle that we usually refer to as the anus, that itself takes a while to relax. If you ever sat on a toilet and you didn't poop right away, and take a deep breath, relax, let your muscle open. You know when your anus is opening up to take a poo. You know this, guys. You've felt this before. When you have that sensation of relaxation and opening up, it opens up like a flower. But when you can actually feel that and see it, you can actually see it. You can actually see the anus kind of like open, oh, like, ooh, hi, how are you? It's actually ready. And one of the ways to get a body that excited is to have a lot of foreplay beforehand in all areas, not just the anus, but have a lot of foreplay. Have a, Even have vaginal sex. Have some oral sex. Um, you know, this isn't, I wouldn't say that anus is something that you do for a quickie. This is something you kind of build into Again, just my interesting point of view, but it can be a lot more fun if your whole body is stimulated, super excited, and your anus just comes up like like a lotus flower and just willing to just show its face world and then go for it. So like I mentioned, start small, go big, fingertip in, and basically you wait 30 seconds to two minutes until the relaxation. Again, if there's been a lot of stimulation before that of all the other body parts, uh, it actually just be relaxed and open. And um, one of my tips was I, that you won't be sorry you waited because uh, it does tend to push out poo. If you don't wait for the relaxation to occur, then it's kind of the fight and the poop the poop uh, risk occurs. So go slow. We had an episode a while ago and I gave some tips on uh, having better sex, better sex in general, but definitely better anal sex is to go slow slow as you can imagine. Um, It's really great to have a partner who has a lot of self-control with this end who has a very hard, rigid penis is also helpful for penetration of the anus because you want to make sure that accent, right? So um, make sure you're erect before attempting because a flaccid penis is going to go there. It's just not going to happen. So hard penis entry is cool, lots of lubrication. Wait those 30 seconds until you're relaxed and ready to receive and have fun. And also, if you're on the receiving and um, your partner is a kind lover, he or she, could be she with her fingers or fisting or toys or whatever, will know um, that you're in control. You, the receiver, are in control. So it's what you say. If you say harder, faster, that's the job of the gifter 
If you say, slow down, buckaroo, that's also the job gifter. So you have to be willing to have a lot of self-control and awareness and presence um, to have a lot of fun with uh, with anal sex. Self self-control, guys and girls. Um, so yeah, so play with that. So if if there is no, you know, if you're with a partner and they don't have um, a fully erect penis, maybe there's been damage or something has gone on, but you're still curious about anal play. Like I mentioned before, try things like anal beads, butt plugs, um, anal vibrators. Again, you can find all of those on my web, pureromance.ca slash Melitza Jelinek or pureromance.com slash Melitza Jelinek. Um, you can find some cool um, mas- mm, anal massagers, butt plugs, and little lubricants and booty ease on there. Lots of stuff for anal play. And using uh, anal beads can be quite a lot of fun because they are usually graduated in size. So they start out with a small size, go bigger, bigger, and you can insert them one bead at a time and you can remove them one bead, at a time, which can also create a lot of fun. And those anal beads can be used during... Um, uh, like vaginal penetration as well. You can, you know, if you're two guys, anal beads can go, two guys can get really creative usually. They don't even need my tips, but two guys, um, for example, you can put the anal beads in, you can be giving oral sex and then anal beads out one at a time. Uh, while your partner is coming, because that can be crazy. So that or girls, you know, giving oral and, you know, your partner's willing to have the anal beads in. Wicked fun. And by girls, you might want to have those anal beads in and have them pulled out during uh, sex as well. You can have the anal play going on with other play at the same time. That gets crazy. And that can be a really fun kind of um, segue into into full-on penetrators to to use some anal beads at first. And they, you can get them really small or you can get them really big. And it's really, go saying, start small, go big. And so start with some small ones like it. And even with the toys, use lots of lube because they're not going to lubricate you. Um, use lots of, and don't worry, you're not going to lose your toy in there. Um, a lot of those toys have things that you can hold on to so that you won't, um, they will just be sucked in like a vacuum. Um, but, there are people who have had things get lost in their anus and weird things from, you know, G.I. Joe dolls to curling irons to all kinds of things. Just watch Embarrassing Bodies, the latest uh, series. They had an entire um, they had a, an entire section of one of their shows on people have lost in their body parts like vaginas and anuses. And there's a lot of interesting things that have been inside of bodies and gotten lost. So when you do have a toy, make sure you've got one that does have something that you can have a grasp on. Butt plugs in general have uh, have something at the end of them to grasp onto to pull out. So those are kind of conveniently cool. All right. Well, we're already at the top of the hour practically. We're at our last break. So um, you are listening to the Pleasures on Inspired Choices Network, and we're going to head off to our last commercial break tonight. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow your to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melissa every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Hey, everybody, this is Dr. Dane here, and I would like to invite you to an adventure in being. I've just written and finished a new book known as Being You, Changing the World. Are you one of those dreamers? One of those people who's always known that other possibilities should be available but haven't yet been able to see them be created? Well, I wrote this book for you. In it, you'll find tools, processes, and unique perspectives to change the things you've always wanted to change but didn't know how. In it, you'll find an invitation to a different possibility for a way that we can be in this world that changes not only our lives, but by being us, 
allows us to contribute to changing everything planet-wide that doesn't work. Are you aware that truly great people, truly being them, is the only thing that has ever created a great change on this planet? Are you willing to step up? Are you willing to be one? Check out a copy of my new book, Being You, Changing the World. I invite you to go to beingyoubook.com for a free gift. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melissa Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MelissaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone and to talking about Backdoor Man Tips on Anal Sex. And there's actually a question in the chat room. And it's, how do we talk about anal sex with a partner who's uncomfortable talking about it? And it's a really great question because a lot of people are really uncomfortable talking about it and many other things. But um, one of the things to do is to bring it up as a discussion of, hey, what's what's something that you really desire? So, Kind of like turn the conversation around to find out what they desire. Um, like what's something you really desire and you've never done? Like in your what imagination, what's something that you would like to try uh, or that you'd like to explore sexually? And they have an answer right away because sometimes they're just, they're not like in the creative brain of that or done everything they would like to try and they didn't think beyond that. Um, and just like, so what would it be like what most fun, outrageously fun thing to do that you've never wanted to ask for? Um, and you have a sincere conversation because this for you, if you're having a hard time having this conversation, might actually be a big ask of you as well. And it's that willingness to be the space of no judgment actually was one of my tips was to be willing to not judge you for asking for it and to be willing to not judge your partner for whatever response they have, whether that's that they're disgusted by it or they're not disgusted by it or they're curious about it, um, but to not shame you and to not shame them for their response and hopefully from them that they are willing to not shame you as well uh, would be really sweet. So kind of knowing your opening, right? Like, is there is there a conversation vulnerable um, coming up? Like, is there a conversation about what you desire? What would you like to explore? Is that conversation on the horizon for you? is your big ask conversation on the horizon. That's a really great time to bring it up and to just even say, like, can we just something small? Like, can we start with this or that, like penetration? And if they have a point of view of, you know, skin-on-skin contact, fingers going into the body and they think that's gross, there are finger condor that you can use. Uh, if they are germaphobes, then that's something that's a little bit bigger and that goes a little bit for them that – they might not be willing to go there because they have the point of view that it's just too dirty uh, and that has nothing to do with you. That's the points of view they've adopted about germs and bodies and stuff like that. So, um, And that's okay. That's just where they're at. So that would be something that they can either work out. And for you too, one of the things would be that, guess what? You can do all these things like anal beads. You can use them on your own. You can actually test this out on your own to develop a sense of comfort, see if you like it. Um, again, start small, go big. So even starting small with your own finger in your own anus and just check it out and put some on there and just go to the first knuckle and just see what does that feel like. Cool. And you might feel like going, check it out for you because then you have sort of a sense of comfort level that you can actually discuss this with your partner to see, would you like it? Is there still the fear? You know, do you have a fear that you're going to poop on or not poop on them or something like that? Like what's coming up for you? Um, keep in mind, too, when there is tration that goes on in the anus, it does build up air. So you can get what sounds like a uh, fart, not actually farts. They're like, uh, just like how you can get vaginal farts, like queets or quaffs or call them, I don't know. You can get them in your, um, you can get them in your anus as well. So, uh, for those of you who would like more tips and tools, you'd like some facilitation or you would like to have a session with me um, online or in person, you can contact me. You can actually find me on my website, melitzajelenik.com. That's M-I-L-I-C-A-J-E-L-E-N-I-C.com. Uh, you can 
send me uh, through there. You can find me on social media through Facebook. I do tend to actually look at my Facebook friendly, but if you are going to friend me on there, you need to send me a message about what you're friending me for because I get a lot of requests and I only answer the ones that I have um, specific emails uh, regarding your request for. So um, before we end, I just want you to keep in mind two positions for anal sex that will keep you comfortable. And uh, one of the things that you can um, just kind of play with is positions so you can play with, um, you know, doggy style is a really great one to work with. And some of the ones are not so comfortable. So play around with it, like on the side with your legs closed, not so not so comfortable and ease for anal sex. So yourself open and in the receiving position and in a really comfortable position for you, uh, for your partner as well. So um, one of the questions too is, what do I coach about? And so I do people on relationships. I coach them on sex and pleasure. I actually coach people on many areas of their lives, but the main thing, health, body, sex, and pleasure. That's kind of my umbrella. And so if you have anything going on in those areas and you um, facilitation, you like tips, um, contact me. Love to hear from you. And next great guest and our show is called uh, refining your energy and potent sexual self. And my guest is Rachel Danson, who's done freaking amazing things in her life and traveled the world and learned from many uh, top masters. So I'm really excited to have her on and have the conversation about refining your energy, particularly, um, and becoming more of your potent sexual self. So until next week, stay tuned in and on. Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Milica Yelenich will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.